President Trump went to France and he took his underpants. He went to mark the 100 years since the end of World War I, but the trip has now been turned into a war of words between the president and other world leaders. In a tweet earlier today, the president slammed allies for not holding up their end of the bargain, saying, quote, massive amounts of money spent on protecting other countries, and we get nothing but trade deficits and losses. It is time that these very rich countries either pay the United States for its great military protection or protect themselves, and trade must be made free and fair. But French President Emmanuel Macron pushing back against President Trump's declaration that he's an American nationalist. Watch. Patriotism is the exact opposite of nationalism. Nationalism is a betrayal of patriotism by saying, our interests first, who cares about the others? We erase what a nation holds dearest, what gives it life, what makes it grace, and what is essential, its moral values. All right, well, why don't you pay for our military and show us how great your moral values are, Emmanuel? So will the president's hardball tactics pay off? Let me ask former Trump campaign manager Corey Lewandowski, also the co-author of the forthcoming book, Trump's Enemies. Bum, 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 bum. Corey, welcome back. Thank you for having me. Uh, so let's parse this a little bit, because I actually don't think Emmanuel Macron is making sense. I think there is an argument to be made against uh, fervent nationalism, obviously. Uh, but he says nationalism is the betrayal of patriotism. What does that mean? It means he's out of his mind, clearly. Look, mm. this president ran on a platform of something crazy to the rest of the world. It was called America First. He's the leader of the greatest country in the world. He didn't run to become the prime minister of Canada or the, the you know, leader of Great Britain or any other country. He ran to make America great again. And he's fought back against globalism, against internationalism. And he said, for a change, we're going to put our country first. Just like every other world leader puts their own country first, the difference is, for too long, we've both been America, uh, the world's police force and the world's piggy banks. And now this president said, look, we're $21 trillion in debt. We're a very rich country, but we deserve better. We need fair trade deals so we don't have a $500 billion deficit with China on a yearly basis. We need fair trade, which means we have access to their markets, but we're also not going to be the police force of the world. Look. Today yeah, is Veterans free, free Day. Trade, free day trade that, is reciprocal. Uh, today is Veterans Day observed. Of course, Veterans Day was yesterday, but it, it's, the it's, children have the day off look, of school, it, and they, they need to internalize the lessons, certainly, of World War I when uh, the balance of the entire globe shifted. Well, it's a day that we have to remember the men and women who serve in uniform every day, and they are here. They put their lives on the line voluntarily to protect our country and our allies, but that doesn't give them a pass. And we've now seen, because of this president and what he has said on the world stage, that other countries are finally starting to pay their fair share of their U.N. dues, mm -hmm. their fair share of their NATO dues. But for too long, they took advantage of we were the only well, ones and, paying. And, you it's know, time I, I everybody don't, has I to I don't put agree up. with you about everything all the time, but I will say this. Uh, there are certainly a lot of countries in Western Europe who do enjoy the military protection from the United States, and therefore they can afford things like socialized medicine. Uh, Macron has found himself in deep yogurt in his country for some of his economic policies, and I know he's trying to get a leg up in the polls and seem like a strong man in his own right by being passive aggressive with the president, but he can't have it both ways. And, and I do think there's an argument to be made that we shouldn't be spending as much money protecting other countries when uh, they have strong alliances. And actually, uh, the president of France and our president were saying the same thing because Macron was like, well, maybe we should have some sort of a European army. I don't have a problem with that. I would love to not be paying $700 billion a year for the military. Well, you're exactly right. And if you look at some of our allies around the world, you know, I look at Poland, where not only are they paying their fair share, but they are encouraging U.S. troops to come and they're willing to pay for that. Look, we have been the police force of the country and the world for literally 50 years or more. And if France has the money, then they should start paying for that. We have sure. our forces spread out all over the world. Look, we still have troops in Japan. We still have troops 
all over the world that aren't being yeah, why, paid why for do by we those have host countries. All over the world. I agree completely. I think there is a phenomenal argument to be made there. And while we're at it, let's cut some entitlement spending, Corey. But unfortunately, you and I can't save the world. Um, so what does this do to the president's relationship with Emmanuel Macron? And do you think that it is possible to mend this rift? Well, this, look, I still think those two world leaders have a great relationship. And, you know, he's a leader that the president speaks to on a regular basis. But just because you have a good relationship doesn't mean you're going to give up what you believe in. And look, President Trump also has a great relationship with the uh, premier of, of Japan, Abe. But he said, look, you're killing us on trade and I can't have it anymore. I'm here to represent the United States. No, and I'm people, sure he said people the same are thing scared to because Macron. American products are quite good. And you're absolutely right. We should have access to those markets and they should have access to ours.